I'm Dr. Lana Staley. I'm the founder of Bounce Be Transform, Change Your Mind, Change Your Life, and Change the World. I'm going to be working with Chat with Women in the next uh, few segments, and I'm going to talk to you about Bounce, how it, what it is, how it came to be, how it works, and how you can implement Bounce into your life. I started counseling and coaching almost 40 years ago now, and I've had some just incredible people uh, in my practice. And when I turned 60, I was started thinking about, now what am I going to do? You know, I've been traveling, I've had a lot of cool experiences, I've had wonderful people in my life. Uh, now what? And so I started doing some research and thinking about, well, what do other people do? Well, it turns out if you retire early and you don't have any passion for anything else, you die or get sick. Well, I wasn't really up for that. Uh, so I started thinking about my own life and what I had learned. In the 1940s, I was born with what was then a fatal birth defect. My esophagus went into my lungs instead of my stomach. And at that time, there was no other survivor except for some, one child who lived a few years. But I was lucky enough to be born in Battle Creek, Michigan, and went to the University of Michigan Hospital a day after I was born because my mother's obstetrician thought I had what I had. So they sent me there, and as luck would have it, a person who was really the first thor thoracic surgeon in the United States was there, and this was his interest. So they operated, uh, they operated me on me the next day, put in a feeding tube so they could feed me, which is the usual problem. Um, and so I got better, and I was there until for three months until September, and then I got to go home. Well, they took me in because uh, my esophagus had to continue to be dilated. So when they took me into the local hospital, the resident ruptured the esophagus. So I can only imagine how hard this was on my parents. So back to the university hospital. Well, they tried putting a feeding tube in and they ruptured it again, but they didn't tell the surgeons. So then I wasn't getting any food and I was getting an infection and it was three days before they let the surgeon know that they had messed it up. So I got massive lung infections one of my lungs collapsed, um, I got some staph infection, and in December, um, I was six months old and I weighed five pounds. And uh, my parents signed a waiver that they could give me streptomycin because it had never been tried on babies before. So they said I might be blind or deaf, but otherwise I would be dead in the next couple of days. And remember, in this, this time, they had to go home. There was no place to stay, and they could come only during visiting hours. And they lived 70 miles away, which wasn't far now, but it was a half a day trip then. So they signed the papers and they went home. And I read my medical records, because my husband's a doctor and we got them. And one doctor stayed with me that whole time. He was there every day with me. And by Christmas, I was up to nine pounds. And by February, I was off the feeding tubes, and by March, I went home. And my whole childhood could have been focused on that. I could have always been like, I don't have any peristalsis, so I have to have water, and I rely on gravity to swallow. So I could have stayed focused on food, and I could have been careful. I have a limited lung capacity. I have a little heart uh, mitral valve problem. But my mother never told me I couldn't do anything. And one time at school, one of the teachers said, oh, Lana, you can't run. And I told my mother, she said, that is nonsense. I will speak to that teacher. And so from then on, it was, it was so clear to me that when I focused on what was right and what I could do, the rest of it faded in the background. And that really became the theme of bounds. We can focus on what's wrong with us or we can focus on what's right with us. And whichever we do, that's what our lives become. So I've had these opportunities to travel all over the world. We've been to probably 80 or 90 different countries. A friend of ours, who's a surgeon uh, who actually works on esophageal problems like mine, said, well, I think it's probably okay that you traveled as long as you didn't go you know, away from ma major medical centers. Well, we took the Trans-Siberian Railroad. We hiked up in the hill tribes of Thailand. You know, we went down rivers in Africa. I mean, all of those things I would have missed 
if we had, if I had just focused on, gosh, I might get something caught in my throat, or I might not be able to eat something, you know, my whole life would have gone a different direction. It would have been a smaller life instead of a bigger life. So as I put together my own thoughts about myself and started reading some of the new research, it really became clear to me that the way psychology had taught us before, that you've got to fix what's wrong with you, really didn't work. And then I started looking at these new fMRIs on really what happens in the brain. And you know, when you think negative thoughts, when you think, oh, gee, I'm so messy. Now, I am messy. I was messy when I was five. I was messy when I was 50. I'm messy when I'm 60. It's just not something that's going to change. So if all my focus was on that, I would be feeling bad most of the time. But instead, that's just part of who I am. I try to keep my mess localized and move beyond it and do things that bring me joy and give my sense, my life a sense of purpose and meaning. And so I decided this is what bounce needs to be about. It really means looking at yourself, looking at your strengths, what brings you joy, and what do you have to offer to the world? Because even in relationships, when you're happy, happy people have happy relationships. Unhappy people have unhappy relationships. So whether it's your relationship with coworkers, whether it's your relationship with your family, being joyful and being intentional about how you live your life changes everything for yourself and for everybody around you. I hope you'll join us for our next segment with Chat with Women. I'm going to be talking about Bounce and how Bounce came into be and how it grew and what happened to the women who became part of Bounce.